I will have from tomorrow a new identity. I will have the identity of becoming the CEO, the chairman of Hairs Holdings. Hairs Holdings. Hairs Holdings will help to advance private investments across Africa as well as advisory business. I believe that what we get will help and what we give. So when we started off a Global Road, so I moved from UBA House then when I left because a few people had already gone on to start. You were here when we celebrated Nonso. Nonso joined June 15th. So whilst I was at UBA, I was providing support to them from well from there. Then August 1st, I physically moved and joined them at Global Road. Global Road was interesting. I mean we didn't have all these frills and fancy stuff that we had now. So I joined Obin Alfudo, Nonso Opala. Uh, I think was I think Kaudun was there at the time. Yes, Kaudun joined in July. Kaudun, Uche Ama, we had Namdi Ugu. So I joined these men over there. So Namdi was like our general office manager, office assistant, office manager, and co. It was not what I expected it to be. I had always hoped that it would be a big organization, uh, but when I got in, there were just four of us. Right? I had always expected that we see Tioi come into the office. But I think he spent almost five months and he never really got into the office. It was high expectation, very low drama, low key, but it seemed like things were in the works. I have worked uh, with uh, TOE for a couple of years, way back in 2003, 2004, 2005. And um, I used to be the head of strategy and performance management for Standard Trust Bank. And also, after we did the merger between STB and UBA, I was the head of financial performance management and budgets. And so I had very close interactions with TOE through those years. And after I you know, went off to school and came back, um, worked a bit in another bank, in 2010, you know, I saw that TOE was uh, retiring and looking to do something new, which sparked my interest. And then we had a discussion, you know, and, and here I am. April 2011, on the weekend, they sent everyone, all staff, a, 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 a memo that we should come to the office here. Then the contractors were still working, they were still doing some painting job, but they were slow. Like I told you, when Chema has set his mind on doing certain things, he doesn't stop. He called us and said, look, this office, we have to move in. We're not giving the contractors for that time. We have to move in. So everybody moved into the building. We were all cleaning. Clean the floors, clean the furniture, clean the louvers, clean everything you know you can do. You take your own office, you clean everywhere. That's how we're all, we all worked the whole of that Saturday, the whole of Sunday. By the following Monday, we resumed work here and ever since we've been continuing like that. Clearly you would say, you know, Transcorp, you know, certainly was one of our, our best investments. If you look at in terms of the capital appreciation that we've had, Transcorp at the time when we did the deal 
was trading at about you know 50 cobo per share um, towards the end of last year third quarter and uh, fourth quarter in last year Transcorp even hit as high as uh, I think about five naira there about so if you look at it from that point of view you say you know Transcorp is a better investment but you know I look at it from all the things that we've done we've done quite a number of things in the last five years you know everything from you know acquisitions to project finance transactions in different sectors to M&A deals to capital market transactions and all and I think every one of them have their own unique uh, unique there's something unique that they bring to the table and all of them you know all the transactions we've done in the last five years have been you know things that have added significant value to who we are as an organization and the kind of returns that we are seeking to, to achieve. I think Transcode, more than anything else, defined who we were as a firm. Um, back then, things were not so clear, and the definition that that acquisition gave us was quite symbolic. It pushed us into the public domain, it defined what it is that we were, and the mantra of change managers came into being, and then the vindication of all the promises that we made, the fact that we actually turned Transcore around was quite significant. And for me, that was the high point of all our efforts in the firm. we do. I think we have so many highlights. I remember going to Makodi when we went to launch the Terrago plant. You know, engaging with the people of Makodi, the look on their face, the hope. You know, that joy of, wow, this plant that has not been working is back up and the employment opportunities. Last two weeks, I met someone at the salon who I mentioned, she talked about, about Transcorp shares, she talked about oh, how she bought her Transcorp shares at the initial public offering at 650 Kobo, she thought all hope was lost, then your company came in. So honestly, there are just too many. First few months when I started working here, we hosted Rasha, USAID director, on the major event. I mean, we had Secret Service on the roof. <laughs> I even think they hid in um, the federal secretary at the vacant building across the street and they were scoping everything out. Um, we got people at the level of Dangote, Arumaute, like dignitaries that you only read of in the news. And for me, this is like my first few months. I resumed in October 20, 2012. Um, and um, right from that, I spearheaded um, setting up uh, um, and a health insurance company. At the same time, we had um, companies that were pulling out of um, UBA and um, had to be involved in the transition process, which is a different sector, properties. I also had to support um, IT in um, Tenoy. And um, I mean, there's so much going on here that um, you really, really, really don't have a choice but to work hard to ensure you meet up with targets. And um, it's amazing how even at that, we are not just a working hard company. We also play hard. I mean, we've had so much um, very exciting uh, events here in the household, in, uh, looking at the TGIFs, looking at the launch of events, looking at the people, very important personnel we've hosted here in the household. It just makes it so, so thrilling. Significant thing for me would be that I that you know keeps staying in my mind. I remember I, I think it was in 2011. Uh, Tioe called myself Obina, and I'm not sure if Weba was there. But I, I think, but I remember myself and Obina, and we were in the room downstairs, the room where you have you know the ten oil guys uh, operating from now, besides Owen's office, and he had a flip chat, and he was sharing with uh, Obina and I you know, how he thought his holdings would evolve, 
you know, and how everything will come together. We always have the sectors we are investing in and we have the companies we are looking at. But until you began to frame, you know, this the how this entity called Hedos Hairs Holdings would, would evolve. And I remember that flip chart. I think I still even have the flip chart with the papers with me. I remember that picture is, you know, it's, it's in my head. It never goes away. And it's interesting to see how everything he described in terms of, you know, sector focus and how we will move uh, our investments around our entire portfolio. It's, it's interesting to see how that is evolving or how that has evolved over the last five years. And, you know, I just look back and it's one of those moments that you know that there are people that will come to this organization in another 10, 15, 20 years time and we'll see all the things that we're doing, but probably we'll never know, you know, how that whole thing evolved that day when we sat in that room in 2011.